We're in the book of Romans, so if you have your Bibles, I uh, would encourage you to open up to the book of Romans, and we're going to, we finished up the book, but I want to go back through and look at a, a few themes, a few key words, a few uh, topics that, that we can spend some more time on, and uh, one of them is pride. We're going to look into Romans on this idea that Paul is going to address on pride, and the opposite is humility. And when we think about humility, I really think that that's going to affect the way that we treat humanity. Um, when, we, when we have a humble spirit, we're going to treat be, people better. But when I am prideful, I think you should treat me better, but I don't necessarily need to treat you better. And that's the way that life tends to work out, that it's okay for me to lie to you, but I get super mad when you lie to me. It's okay for me to steal a little from you, but don't ever steal from me, you know, because we're the ones who deserve it. It's my life and it, everything should revolve around me. You know, it's, it's sort of like uh, uh, people say the earth revolves around the sun and people are like, well, I think the earth revolves around me. You know, that's, I, I think everybody should do it my way. That's why Burger King has uh, their slogan, right? Do it, we'll do it your way. Um, so when we think about pride, it's a, it's a struggle. And um, in reality, when we look at the Bible, all categories of sin fall into one of these three. You name any sin, name any sin you want, and it will fall under at least one of these categories. And uh, one of those categories, this is found in 1 John, by the way, if you guys want to look it up, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. We have these desires of our eyes. I want to look at things and covet them and just long on them and wish that I had them. Oh, I wish I could have that. Wish I... The other one is lust of the flesh, the desires of the flesh, the things that, that make me feel good. You know, these things make me feel good and I just have to have it. And then thirdly is the pride of life. This is what, not just what makes my body feel good, but what makes my ego feel good? What makes my emotions feel good? That's the pride of life. What, what makes me, you know, when, when, when um, people disrespect us, that's, and we get super mad, that's the pride of life. You don't know who you're talking to, you know, do you, because you're affecting my reputation. You're affecting who, who people view me to be or who I view myself to be. All of those things fall under the pride of life. We all struggle with these sins. And uh, we're going to, to look at, through the book of Romans and see. But I wanted to, first of all, look at the definition of pride as found in um, uh, Webster's Dictionary. That uh, it's an exaggerating or a tend to exaggerate one's own worth or importance, often by an overbearing manner. You see, we tend to overbear. We tend to impose ourselves. We impress ourselves on somebody else of how good I am, showing an offensive attitude or superiority. And we can do this in many ways. Sometimes it's by force. Sometimes it's by manipulation. You know, there's a lot of different ways, but I'm going to make you know that I deserve to be treated better. You see, we're always striving for that goal in our pride. The opposite of pride is humility. Humility is the state of being humble. Don't you like it when, when you ask, what does humility mean? And they're like, oh, it means to be humble. Like, that's the same word. You're using the same word to divine the word. Well, it, it's original comes from the Latin, which means low. And that's the Bible meaning of humility, is to be brought low, to make low, to think of yourself as a servant, to think of yourself as a created being, to think of yourself as a fellow human being, that you're a human, I'm a human, we're all human, you know, like, I, why am I more special than you? You know, why? What, what makes me better than you? There's, what, seven, eight billion people in the world? Why am I so special? Just because my fingerprints are different? You know, why? Why, why are we always trying to make ourselves higher than somebody else? Whereas God is going to encourage us to think of ourselves as, you know what? I've sinned against God. I have sinned against people. I have treated people horribly. I have done a lot of bad things and, and I don't deserve 
the goodness and the grace that God has shown to me. So I tend to lower myself and whatever goodness is in my life is only by the grace of God. I have good health, to God be the glory. I got a good job, to God be the glory. Do I have a good education? To God be the glory. You know, whatever you've got, it's because of God. You see, and any time that I start to think that it was because of me, now that's that pride that's talking. So as we look here, we're going to see where Paul, in the book of Romans, he is going to command about not being arrogant. He says it in chapter 11, verse 18, chapter 11, verse 20, chapter 11, verse 25, and in 12, 16, chapter 12, verse 3, 12, and verse 16, do not be arrogant. Another word for pride, being prideful is what? Arrogant. So Paul says, don't be arrogant. Don't be conceited. You know what another word for prideful is? Conceited. He's like, don't be conceited. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Now, he doesn't use the word pride. But what is it to be wise in your own eyes? I think that you should do this my way because my way is always better. You see, I'm wiser than you are. So you need to be sure that you do it my way. And if you don't do it my way, I'll be sure to let you know about it. And I'll remember. Remember how I told you it should have been like this? And I'll make sure that I show you how superior I am in my wisdom to you. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Do not think more highly of yourself than you should. You see, we have a tendency to think of ourselves higher than we really ought to. That's what we, it's difficult teaching our children, right? Children, it, it, all of life revolves around them. Everything is about them. Well, as we get to be adults, you realize your boss doesn't care who you are. You better show up and get your job done, right? Like, there's a job to be done. And, and we realize the world doesn't revolve around me anymore. Don't be haughty in mind. I don't know what other people's Bibles say, but it's still pride. Don't be prideful. Don't be conceited. Don't be arrogant. Don't think you're all that in a bag of chips, right? That people will, will, will they'll, they'll just get this puffed up, big mind, right? Here's, here's what pride leads to. We're going to look through all of these verses in, uh, in the book of Romans, and I want you to see how uh, Paul is going to bring up what pride ultimately leads to in our life. He says, number one, that if you're prideful, you're not going to honor God or give thanks to God because I deserve it anyway. You know, why should I give thanks to him? Those things were coming my way because I deserve it. And so we really stop thanking God. I, I truly believe the more humble you are, the more thanks that you will give. So I don't know if it's the more thanks that you give, the humbler you will become, or the more humble you are, the more thanks you give. You know, but, but they go hand in hand. There's many times that we're not grateful. How many of us, as, as, when we were growing up, were not grateful for all the things that our parents did for us? And then when we get older, we're like, oh, man, they did this and this and this and this and this. And now I thank them, right? So hopefully, as God's people, we want to be a, those that honor God, give Him thanks for all that He's done. When we're prideful, we will profess to be wise. We will, we will tell people that my way is better. My, I, you know, don't, don't, bring, don't, don't tell me about all that stuff. I, I know my way. My way is good. My way works. Okay, so you're not open to anything else. And he said it will lead to being arrogant and boastful. Boastful is the verbal action of pride. I'm already prideful inside, but I'm going to let everybody else know about it. You see, that's boasting, using your mouth. Chapter 3, he'll say that there is no fear of God in their eyes. In reality, I become God. You see, why, why should I fear God? Because I'm really the top of the food chain. You see, I'm, I'm at the top of how all this goes. And so people don't fear God when there's a lot of pride. You'll hear people blaspheme God, curse God, you know, 
say that there is no God, all of these things, there is no fear in their eyes. And that, I think a lot of that stems from pride. That, and, and they're so focused on self, on the flesh, that God says in chapter 8, verse 8, you cannot please God when you have this type of mentality because God is the opposite. Chapter 10, it says that uh, the Jewish people, that they, they would not submit, they would not humble, they would not lower themselves to the righteousness of God. God had a plan to save the Jewish people, and they were refusing to submit to God's plan. They, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't accept it. Well, why not? Pride. You see, they, they had it better. Chapter 10, verse 21, that when we're prideful, we, we, we don't respect the word of God, so we're going to do whatever I want to do, and it leads to disobedience, and it leads to obstinate is like a hard heart. Hard heart is, I, I don't need to listen to, to what you have to say. You know, and that's hard. When we're trying to work with people and talk with people, and they're like, don't, 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 don't bring anything up to me. That's obstinate. That's a hard heart. You're not open to what anybody else has to say. That's, that's not what God wants. Chapter 13, they will su not submit themselves to governing authorities. And, and this is a challenge in America because we are the land of the free, right? And, and so it's sort of like we're free. We're supposed to be able to do whatever we want. Well, as Christians, God is going to say that we're supposed to submit to the governing authorities, and that's a challenge. I mean, that's, that's a challenging thing. Chapter 14, verse 1, verse 3, and also in chapter 15 and verse 7, that there were people in the church that refused to accept those that God had accepted. You see, God had accepted them. Why aren't you? Because you know better than God. You know that they should not be accepted. He's saying, hey, that God, if God has accepted them, then you need to accept them. Also in chapter 14 and verse 7, you'll live for self. Again, it's just all about you. In chapter 14 and verse 13, it'll say that uh, when we're full of pride, that we will judge our fellow Christians in matters of opinion. You see, those are areas that God has allowed some flexibility in. There's some flexibility there. He's, he's like, don't, don't be judging. Why are you judging? It would fall into a pride issue. If God has accepted them, you need to accept them. Chapter 15, they will not, um, people who are prideful will not carry the burden of their fellow Christians that are weaker than you. You're, you're just, again, to please self. Whereas when you are somebody that um, is prideful, you're like, that's your fault. You know, that's on you. And you have no, you have no desire to take on somebody else's uh, weaknesses that they may be struggling with. Chapter 15 and verse 2. You're not going to look to please your neighbor for their own good. Because this life is all about me. So why should I, why should I be about them? And what, what, is, what is for their good? Chapter 15 and verse 3. They will not remember the example of Jesus that he did not even please himself. You see, pride, pride blinds us. We, we, we can't see all the things that God wants us to do or not to do because of, of my, my, my focus on self. And what's, <laughs> you know, one of the most difficult things is when I'm full of pride and I don't recognize my own pride. That is challenging. You see, that's challenging. Um, we, we talked about it this morning in Bible class, that when I'm the one who's the abrasive one, I'm the one that's sort of the aggressive and, and causes fights with everybody. And in my mind, I'm like, why are they always so confrontational? Why do they want to fight me? Why are they so, always so angry with me? And in reality, I'm the one that comes across that way. It's hard to see it in ourselves. It's like we can always recognize it in somebody else, but it's hard to recognize it in ourselves. So God is going to repeatedly tell us and warn us about the dangers of pride. 
you guys can go back through these, but basically what I did is, is some of it states it specifically as a negative and then others it po states it as a positive. So you'll have to go back through these verses and, and reread it. But what I did is, is we're just going to flip it. Now, if you are trying to be low, if you are trying to live a life of humility, then you will honor and give thanks to God. You see, you will not boast in your own wisdom. You'll say, you know what, this is what I think, but, you know, I'm human. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I know I messed up. We should check that out. You will not see yourself as the only one who knows all, chapter 2 and verse 19. You will fear God. You will recognize that He's the Almighty. You will recognize that He's the one that I need to submit to. Chapter 10, you will submit yourself to the righteousness of God. When He presents the way you should live, okay, God, I might not like it. I might not agree with it, but you're God, and I'll do it your way. You see, that's what humility leads to. Chapter 10, verse 21, humility will lead you to seek to obey God and to have an open heart. See, I, I, I know that my way tends to screw up things. My way tends to, to mess up things. I want your way, God. I want to know you, your way, Yahweh. Right? That's, that's ultimately His way. I want to have an open heart. I will not be arrogant towards other people. I will recognize that I've been there in those trials. I've been though in there where I've been full of myself. I, I've been there. So I want to be more patient with those who are struggling with those temptations. Chapter 11, you will not be conceited and haughty, but you'll have fear. You, you will say that, when I start to view other people as, look at how prideful they are, look at how conceited they are, by me just starting to say those things, guess what I start to fall into myself? Pride. You know, there's this, I, I've told this story before, but there's a football player that uh, he was known to, to, they're like, man, he's a humble guy. And uh, one time they were interviewing him and he, he told the 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 reporters, he said, you know, I'm, I'm the humblest person you know. Just by saying that, guess what he fell into? Pride. He was humbler than all of you. Right? So, so we've got to be careful that as soon as I think I'm very humble, whoa, be careful, because those are the times that I start to find myself looking at other people saying, how come they're not? Look at how prideful they are. Look at, and there's that judging in, in some of these areas that we've got to be careful in. So it's like, you've got to be careful. We, when we're humble, we're not going to be wise in our own eyes, but we're going to seek God's wisdom. Proverbs chapter 3, do not lean on your own understanding. But look to God. You see, you've got to look to God. What does He want in my life? In Bible class, again, what is God's will? It's not my will, but, but God's will. Chapter 12, if I have humility, then I will not think of myself more highly than I should. And, and you'll have sound judgment. Is this a sin or is this something that I need to have patience with? You see, there's a difference. There's sound judgment. We're all making judgments all the time but sometimes they're not always sound or healthy judgments. Chapter 12, um, you will not be haughty in mind, but associate with the lowly. Those people that are struggling, I am not too full of myself to, 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 to get in with people that are struggling, right? That I'm, I associate with the lowly. Chapter 13, you will subject yourselves to the governing authorities because that's what God says so. You will accept the weak in the faith because God has accepted them. You will not live for yourself. You will not judge someone based on their opinions of where the Bible allows for various stances like in chapter 14 of food and days. Where, where are we at? You see, where are we at? You will carry the weakness. 
of your brother and not just seek to please yourself. It's not about you. And you know what's hard? What's hard is to think of others as more important than myself is going to require me to give up of myself because I view your life as just as important, if not more important than mine. And because of that, my time, which is valuable to me, is going to be sacrificed for you. My money, which is very valuable to me to help my life be good, that my money will be sacrificed for you. My energy, which I feel like I'm scraping for to get enough energy, then that's valuable to me. It makes my life pleasant. But if I sacrifice that for you, those, those, those are hard. You see, you're, you're going to please your neighbor for their good. And the reason that you can do this is because you will look to the example of Jesus and imitate him who did not seek to please himself. That's the only way. That's the only way because what was Jesus' life? Full of self-sacrifice and humility. So if I'm going to be his follower, then that means I need to take on his characteristics. And I will look out for my neighbor as myself. You will accept one another just as Christ has accepted you. You will find reasons for boasting in not what you have done, not in your job because of how great you are, but you boast in what God has done. God bless me with this job. God bless me with this wife. God bless me with these children. God bless me with this house or this car or whatever. It's all, it's, it's God. So I boast in what he has done in my life. You see, all sins fall into one of these three categories. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. <laughs> I, 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 I run out of stories, guys, those of you that have been here all the time. I'm not as creative with my stories and um, seem to come up with as many, but I remember this lady, godly, godly woman, and uh, she said that, uh, Josh, she said, I'm 80-something years old now, and she said, the lust of the eyes, you know what, I don't desire some of those things like I used to. You know, the things that caught my eye when I was young, she said, I... As I've gotten older, I, I just don't really care for those things anymore. And she said, the lust of the flesh, she goes, my body is wearing out, and I realize that I'm in pain all the time, and, and yes, I'd like to feel better, but she's like, some of the lust and the things that really used to grab my attention when I was younger, she's like, I, I, I just don't have the same struggle with the lust of the flesh as I used to. But she shook her head and she said, Josh... But that pride of life kicks me every single day. She's like, that is so hard for me. She's like, I battle that to this very day. Guys, we will never escape these different temptations. But the one that I believe is in the middle of all sin, because you write out the letter S-I-N, What's in the middle of all sin? I. I. Why did you steal? Yeah, it looked good, but it's ultimately because I wanted it. Why did you cheat on your wife? Yeah, it might feel good, but it's ultimately because she made me feel better than my current wife. You see, it's all about pride. You see, so much of our sin in this world is because of pride pride. And so as I look through the book of Romans, you have Jewish Christians, you have Gentile Christians, and Paul is going to address both sides to say both of you are looking at the other side as a little bit superior to the other. And you know what happens when you start doing that? It starts causing division. And so Paul is going to address both of them you are both sinners. 
And so what does that do to our pride? It lowers us, right? Gentiles, you're all sinners. Jews, you're all sinners. Now you've been brought low. Our salvation, our freedom is only through Jesus Christ. Now what do you have to boast about? Did you save yourself? Are you a righteous person? Nope, it's only through Jesus Christ. So your boasting is now all about Him. So together we become united that we were lost together in the same place of sin, saved together in the same place of Jesus Christ. And he's going to say, listen, if you want to be a follower of Jesus, you've got to be willing to die to yourself. That's a humility. He's like, it used to all be about you. But now, in order to become a part of Jesus' family, he says everybody who puts their faith and trust in Jesus, that he's our Savior, then what you're going to do is you're going to say, I'm ready to die to that person. I'm ready to repent and turn away from that life. And Jesus says, now you take your life and you bury it. You die in the waters of baptism. You bury it in the water and then you are resurrected to a new life. And now everything that this new life is about, it's about Jesus. It's about him. So you know what? I can be more patient with my brothers and my sisters. I can be more patient with those who are not Christians because they don't know any better. They don't know. So I can, I can try to teach them. I can try to love them. I can try to pray for them. I can try to serve them better without just shunning them. You see, because now I realize that I was just like them and I wish somebody would help me. Just as somebody helped me, I want to help them. That's the goal. That's the goal of, of ultimately this thing called Christianity. Followers of Jesus, that's where our faith and our trust is at. If you are not a Christian, I would encourage you today, let's make that decision. If you are a Christian, I hope that this has been encouraging, helpful. Stir us up, spur us on, right, to keep on going, to uh, humble ourselves before the almighty hand of God. If it's convenient, would you please stand as together we sing this song?